This season, a prominent trend in top-level football is the increasing adoption of a four-player midfield. Among high-possession elite teams, these teams are transitioning into a loosely structured 3-2-4-1 formation when in possession, often stemming from a base 4-3-3 setup. The primary advantage of deploying four midfielders is in recent times. While most teams convert to a 3-2-4-1 structure by shifting a fullback inward, as seen with Alexander Zinchenko at Arsenal and Chelsea. in all phases of possession. Pep Guardiola's plan since the start of the year has been transparent, employing a 3-2-4-1 formation that incorporates a 3-2 setup during the team's progression. Pep opted to deploy Rico Lewis alongside Rodri, utilising Lewis's technical proficiency to add an extra player in the build-up, thereby ensuring an enhanced level of control. Here enters John Stones shortly after returning from injury. On the 15th of March, Pep Guardiola assigned Stones to assume Lewis's position and he impresses with his exceptional performances. Stones showcases remarkable ease with ball possession, displaying the agility and skill typically seen in midfielders. Stones' heightened awareness of defending in a high line, combined with his defensive expertise, contributes an additional dimension to Man City's dominance when facing counter-attacks and low defensive blocks. His presence strengthens the team's ability to nullify opponents, attacking threats and maintain control over the game. The remarkable technical ability displayed by John Stones enables him to execute smooth turns as a centre-back, and it is truly impressive. Such fluidity is typically associated with only the most exceptional midfielders, but Stones has been entrusted with a distinctive role that perfectly embodies Pep Guardiola's philosophy of maintaining a balance of five players in both the attacking and defensive third. He exemplifies the concept of numerical superiority on the field, seamlessly transitioning into the half space to bolster Man City's attack and prowess when required, and promptly retreating to provide defensive support when the team needs it. Stones' versatility and tactical understanding enables him to effectively contribute to both ends of the pitch, making him a vital component in implementing Guardiola's new strategic vision. Guardiola's teams have always aimed to play expansive possession-based football, focusing on having numerical superiority in the attack and third, whilst also prioritising counter-attack prevention when they lose possession. However, this season, Man City have undergone some changes with the acquisition of Erlen Haaland, and they have finally reintroduced a conventional striker after losing Aguero a couple of years ago. While this addition gives City one of the most prolific goal scorers in the world, it has necessitated some adjustments in their style of play to accommodate Haaland's strengths. Haaland's ability to make runs in behind the opposition emphasises the need for risky passes into the space and final third, leading to a higher frequency of turnovers. Consequently, City must place even greater emphasis on ball circulation while maintaining a defensive shape. When the fullbacks are positioned deeper and narrower than the traditional overlapping fullbacks, they are better positioned to quickly retreat and defend against counter-attacks when possession is lost. By starting closer to the central areas of the pitch, the inverted fullbacks are naturally closer to the critical defensive zones as soon as the ball is relinquished. As a result, inverted fullbacks have become a staple feature of Guardiola's teams. However, Guardiola now seems to have an even more efficient approach to counter-attack prevention when it is needed most. While the idea of deploying a centre-back in midfield may be unconventional, Stones begins matches alongside the other three centre-halves, either alongside or behind them. When City loses possession, they have one of at least Stones or Rodri positioned behind the ball, ready to nullify any potential counter-attacks, and this setup provides an added layer of defensive security.
match in this new role coincided with Man City's resounding 7-0 drubbing of RB Leipzig in the Champions League round of 16. And since the positional switch, City's average number of goals his team to succeed in individual duels. Among City players this season, only Ache boasts a higher overall duel success rate of Stones. Now, I was fairly surprised when John Stones didn't make it into the team of the season. Obviously, you had Sven Botman and Ruben Diaz make it instead of him, and I completely understand Sven Botman's inclusion, but I think the other centre-back spot probably should have gone to Stones instead of Diaz. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Ruben Diaz is one of the best centre-backs in the league, but this season, I've I think he'd be quite far down the list in terms of Man City centre half options. Obviously, I think Ache had an absolutely fantastic season after being linked with a move away in the summer of last year. I think Akanji, bag in the summer for me. I don't think anyone expected him to be as good of a player he was. I think he played the most minutes as well um, for City, defender wise. Um, and obviously, you've got John Stones, who has been a complete revelation this season, and I was very surprised that he weren't included. For me, he didn't need to improve by any means. I think he's always been quite underrated in terms of his ball playing and comfortability on the ball, but I think he's been one of the most improved players in the league. He's literally turned into one of the most important players for a team in the league, and I think he'll continue to do that going into next season. I think he'll also play an important part in City's game against Inter Milan tonight in the Champions League final, and I expect him to put on a fantastic performance yet again. I see Man City, unfortunately, finally winning that Champions League that they've been desperate for for the past couple of years. Anyway, boys, if you've watched it this far, I do really appreciate it. The support on this channel's been ridiculous, to be honest. I, I can't comprehend how much support I've had, and I think it's mind-boggling, to be honest. This is like my eighth video now, and I think the feedback has been... it's crazy i can only thank you boys for it anyway i hope you have a lovely day and thanks very much for watching